Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Becky, Research Director for AI with Futurum Group. Welcome to the AI Moment, our weekly podcast that explores the latest developments in enterprise AI. We are literally in a moment. The pace of change and innovation in AI is unprecedented, and the world has never seen anything like we, what we've experienced since ChatGPT launched in late 2022 and kick-started the generative AI era. So with this show, The AI Moment, we're going to distill uh, the mountain of information, uh, separate the real from the hype, provide you with sure-handed market analysis from the latest advancements in AI technology and the mutating vendor landscape to things like AI regulations, ethics, and risk management. So each show is typically about 30 minutes long. Today, we have a case study. And I'm going to be covering what I call Gen AI case study for Amazon Pharmacy. So this is how this goes. I was, uh, you know, I do a lot of reading. I'm um, out looking around at things all the time. And this past week, uh, on the 24th, uh, Amazon posted a blog, and it was the description of how Amazon is using generative AI to automate a bunch of processes and improve customer experience. Uh, for Amazon Pharmacy. So um, I thought that was interesting to look at. And, and so uh, what caught my attention was how this is such a great lesson to learn for most of us that are looking at uh, enterprises that are looking to implement AI, uh, particularly generative AI and kind of the pragmatic approach. The use case is interesting. So I thought I'd share that with you today in our in our segment. So here's kind of the key details. Um, Amazon Pharmacy is like a full service pharmacy within Amazon.com store, the store. And they talk about what you can do there. Uh, customers can use it to purchase medications prescribed by their doctors and have them delivered. And uh, Prime members have this some benefits like free two day delivery um, and some savings. There's something called an RX Pass, uh, which offers access to unlimited eligible prescription medications for $5 a month. And all these Amazon Pharmacy customers have 24-7 access to a pharmacist to discuss questions about their medications. That's one thing. Uh, in, the, in the blog post, the, the key person is... Alexander Alves, A-L-V-E-S. He's a, a senior principal engineer at Amazon Pharmacy. And um, what is interesting, if you read through the blog post, uh, so these are key points, like I said, he's trained as a uh, computer scientist and had uh, pre-generative AI experience working with um, AI models, deep learning models, um, in the area of learning to streamline supply chains and all those kinds of things. So he's the one that led the initiative. The third big point here is to, um, they went through thinking about their generative AI capabilities. They went to AWS, which is where uh, many tools and platforms live. And Alves and the team used what they describe as multiple pre-trained models from two pieces from AWS, Amazon Bedrock, and Amazon SageMaker. SageMaker is the um, machine learning uh, tool platform on in, in AWS. And again, here's some interesting things. The team is using Gen AI right now to address several issues. One was, the first one was how to streamline uh, some manual elements to digital prescription filling. Second one was how to forecast medication demand and to streamline and speed up delivery. Third one was how to enable the clinical and customer care teams to answer medication questions faster. And the fourth one was how to deliver these medications to users more efficiently. So four different areas they worked on. So let's look at those four areas real quick. The digital prescriptions, 
in uh, what they what they were talking about the problem in this case is that these digital prescriptions contain confusing um, inconsistent language uh, particularly in the directions for the user so workers have to sift through these prescriptions by hand to edit and clarify and confirm the data which slows down the process of um, filling the prescriptions so Amazon solved this challenge by running the original, uh, it's unstructured data uh, through a generative AI model, uh, which uses a process called name entity recognition uh, to create a structure for the text. And they use categories such as dose or frequency. And from there, uh, that helped the Amazon pharmacy clinical staff fill these prescriptions and provide more clear instructions for the patients. So by the end result, when they ran these models and, and kind of unified and kind of looked at the structured, unstructured data, the final prescriptions were are still reviewed by a pharmacist who checked the AI to make sure that what they're suggesting in terms of these directions work, right? So when they did this, so they combined this approach, this generative AI approach with the expertise of the pharmacists and Amazon, and this is an interesting point because it's a data point for a metric for success. It was, they said, Amazon has increased order processing speed by 90% um, and reduced um, the rate of human error. So it's problem number one, they did this, they got that kind of result. The second one was around forecasting medication. And what that was is think about it as forecasting medication demand. And what they wanted to do was help them, Amazon, stock uh, the right medications in each shipping location. So it would be ready to be dispensed when a prescription came in. And what the team did in this case was they used generative AI to synthesize data to test different stocking scenarios, uh, both for how much you would spend, how much you would send to a, a shipping location, but also for determining uh, dispense methods on site. So they, you know, they put them in these canisters and they were looking for the most efficient way to do that. And apparently that worked out pretty well as well. I don't have a metric from that, but that's what they used it for was to, to, to do that. And then third, um, they found that it was difficult in many instances to decide to fill an order individually or in batch, right? So, you know, that natural tension you have when uh, is the, is the need that, is, is it that immediate? Can we wait to fill this when we are doing things together or do we have to fill this right away? So uh, Alv said this, and this is a quote, he says, by improving our ability to ingest data and interpret context, generative AI can help us improve these predictions and batching decisions and help customers get their prescriptions more quickly. And he said, if you don't need a refill for a month, that request can probably wait until we can batch it. If you need a medication urgently, we're going to bump it up to the front of the line. So that's how they used all this stuff. Very cool. Um, and that's just to give you an idea of kind of what they were thinking about and how they approached it. So here's what I, I think about that. Um, and I think the lessons we can learn, um, you know, Generative AI has basically overrun us as a, as a planet, as people, uh, but it's usually, it, it really is a lot at still this point about concepts and theories and ideas about what generative AI can actually do. Um, and I felt like the, the, the practical use of generative AI is, it really is still very nascent. We don't, we haven't seen a ton of proven use cases out there. But I thought that um, this this idea from Amazon and Amazon Pharmacy's case study is really an important one for the market because it reveals lessons that any enterprise can can learn from, and and it gives you basically a blueprint that we you any enterprise can follow in their journey to unlock the value of generative AI. Here's here's why I think that there's really a few points. 
there's three. So the first one is, um, I wanted to start by saying Amazon culture played a part in, in this whole uh, scenario. And what I mean by that is if you, you talk to Amazon, folks that work for Amazon, they'll always tell you, uh, one thing was it, they, they tell you at AWS, they'll say AWS was born out of Amazon's desire to explore how to better host Amazon Marketplace. And so, you know, these elements of Amazon culture play into this case study. So number one, Amazon typically approaches innovation uh, and opportunities because a customer presents it with a challenge. They'll always tell you that at AWS to say, you know, well, we, why are you looking at this? Well, because the customer asks us to. So uh, in this case, um, the customer, Amazon's many divisions are, are frequently the customer uh, and Amazon Pharmacy has this obviously this natural connection and path to experimenting with AI experts in the platforms at AWS. So that plays into it. So let's just say that culture of, of how they approach things is, do we have a problem? Are we going to look at it? Where can we go within, you know, how do we solve this? And that leads into the second point that I think you take away from this, that if you saw in, in the brief description we had about what this looks like, uh, Amazon starts with problem solving and they also start with expertise. So let's look at that for a second. If you think about the approach they took, uh, the team started with this a process or operation that needed improvement. All four of those examples we talked about were processes or operations that they said, how do we, how do we go, how do we be faster? How do we be more efficient? Really was the, uh, the goal there when you were hearing those um, issues they were looking at. So it, it, what I think is key is they started with the business or operation problem first, and then they explored whether there was a technology that could help solve it. And I think this is fundamental. It sounds kind of basic, but it's, it, 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 you'd be amazed. Um, the most critical first step to being successful with generative AI is that you think about the problem first. You don't say, well, we want generative AI, we're gonna figure out what to do with it. And second, you think about this was interesting to me. So that, that's number one, it's very fundamental. But I wanted to notice something else here that um, they were able to move swiftly, pharmacy, the pharmacy was, in part because the team leader, this Alves, uh, has AI experience. And not only does he have AI experience, he has it in the areas that are most relevant to Amazon Pharmacy, this supply chain management. And the, the companies that are really going to move fast and operationalize AI the earliest are the ones that have been invested. I, I've said this many times, but it's, 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 it's a fact. The, the ones that have been invested in uh, AI for at least two to three years are going to be the ones that are going to move the quickest. And the reason for that is these companies already understand um, the life cycle management of AI, the risks, uh, the need for data. And many companies don't have the luxury of having experienced AI technologists on staff like pharmacy does with Alvis. And uh, they're, so you're learning as you go, right? You don't have anybody to lean on with experience. So you're, as a company, you're learning as you go. And I think that when that's the case, if, if you're a company that doesn't have bench strength in AI, it, whether it's a business experience or the technical experience, how do you overcome that? Uh, the first thing you do is you leverage vendor partners or consultants who do have that and maybe even domain expertise. So that's something to think about. I think as we keep get moving forward in the generative AI era, we're going to continue to see companies take a step back and look for a little help, a little expertise, which makes them actually run faster once they do have that. So, so that's an, another lesson. And I think the final one uh, to think about here is Amazon is harnessing the good parts of LLMs and is avoiding the bad parts of LLMs. So I'm going to give you my favorite quote ever about AI, and it's from Andrew Ning, uh, who runs uh, DeepMind. And um, so he says this, he says, 
use LLMs as a reasoning engine to process information rather than using it as a source of memorized information. So I think that's really wise. It gets at the crux of what the issues are with LLMs. Um, and if you note, and I'll get into this for a second, but if you, you note in Amazon's use case, um, the generative AI was not unleashed in text generation or conversable, conversational AI agents. It was rather Amazon um, channeled the generative AI as Andrew and Ning suggests, and it's that as a reasoning engine to process information. And I think as LLMs continue to evolve, uh, some of their challenges might get solved uh, around hallucination and uh, you know misinformation and and just how they're they're a little brittle. They don't uh, they're not ready for uh, to be unleashed on us without a lot of help in that sense. But and I think those challenges are going to be addressed over time. But in the meantime, can your company take the risks that LLMs present when they are used in this way, if they're if they're not if they're used as a source of mem memorized information, I don't think so. So uh, looking at them as an engine to process information is a much safer and a really uh, good way to go. So that's it today. I wanted to uh, share with you that use case and just some very clear examples about how to move forward and kind of I think it's encouraging. To see that kind of work out there, it's pragmatic and practical. I love that. So that's our show for today. I want to thank you for joining me here uh, on the AI Moment. Be sure to subscribe and rate and review the podcast on your preferred platform, and we'll see you next week.